Welcome Hello. back to the Charles Ogan Experience on a Welcome, Fun Again. everyone. Great We're back again. To see you again. With a long oh, handshake oh, oh, oh. for everyone to enjoy. Like and subscribe, everyone. Well done to all of you who have already done that. You're doing a good job, YouTube. We can actually get paid for YouTube now. I just need to do the back end details. Just get get your thumb out your ass. Yeah, I really as do. In, as in do it, yeah. Literally, yeah, yeah. I need to do it. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. Good job, though. Yeah, yeah. Good well job, done. Well Thanks done. a lot. Keep liking, subscribing, Spotify, do the ratings, do all that. Let's do these questions. Yeah, we're rapid fire. Your time is of the essence today, isn't it? It's going to be rapid fire questions today. There won't be much uh, use to this, but let's go. <laughs> Defending Toriano passes. Where do you frame main retention method? You want to kick this one off, Sport? Do you keep knees in? Bit of, bit of I do keep going. the knees in, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. yeah I was yeah. trying to try on the pass you today. You're going you're gonna to do a good job. Did I? Yeah. I tried yeah, to I move your legs aggressively. Yeah, yeah. Didn't work too well. No. Because yeah. you, you, you'll come here and you get a nice other, that leg comes and around. I hold me own leg, yeah. That's oh, the you, one. Get the you get the self frame. Self frame, well done. So, hold on, as that one's getting passed, you self frame here. Yeah, that's the one. And then it's hard to throw your knees to the side. Yeah. We've actually done that. Uh, in a post talking about self framing, yeah, there you go. You remember that the, the half a Mendes demonstration, vaguely, huh? Vaguely, yeah, yeah. I remember that, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so that's, that's the, the answer. So, if there's a push to one side, you self frame, so then until, then blocked. until you can grab their legs, right? Until you can grab onto them, you, if you're on your back, you should self frame. That's the rules. I think, yeah, if you can grab their leg, you should grab their leg. It's a subtle movement as well because your subtle. elbow's just sitting there, not yeah. too wide. No, because then there's underhooks in that. Maybe someone will punch in an underhook and you won't be ready to re pummel. I was trying to look for one today, but there's too much going on. Yeah. Like, got too much stuff. chaos. Too much EMOM. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, that's it. Self frame a bit and then grab their legs. And then once you've got their legs, there's no side to side movement and you're having a great time. And you're going for the the far leg or any leg that comes near you? Because if say if they come in, any leg that comes near you, near leg, any leg. How are you grabbing that? You just grab any leg, anyhow. What kind of grab? Let's it say they matter. sit really close to you. This would be my new DVD, by the way. Let's say they stand really close to you, and you can get an underhook on the leg. I would elect to take the underhook, but if they stand with, let's say their foot is not past your shoulder line, then I would take an over grip. Uh, Makes sense. If foot is not past shoulder line, over grip. Yeah, it could be like this or it could be like that and if they're past you it'll be an underhook but never a long underhook yeah, that's how our boy popped his bicep yeah, yeah yeah that was savage don't pop your bicep guys cool so great one to kick things round off. it off thank you guys for watching we okay, got some youtube one. questions too but anyway let's go <laughs> how much has roger influenced your game do you go to a lot of his classes anytime roger's there i will try to go to the class and you're there anyway i'll be there anyway yeah yeah but uh yeah do you have so, some questions Hey, do you ask him questions? Sometimes I'll ask questions about the technique he's shown. I try not to try not to annoy him too much. You know, don't want to don't want to pry. But uh, yeah, I'll ask him questions if if he's shown him if he's shown him. But to be fair, Big Dave will normally uh, will normally ask the questions and uh, you know and he'll he'll almost debate it so I don't have to say anything. What um what have you learned recently of Hodge? Big Hodge. I like the uh, half butterfly passing he was showing. He did a little video on that as well on his page. You can go and check it out. Uh, did with Faris, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. it. Yeah, so he did a bit of half butterfly pass in there, and uh, I like to do do that how he showed. Uh, let me try and think other stuff that he showed. Showing some leg lock escapes, which are decent. Uh, yeah, showed some wrestle ups too the other day. You went there for that. Though. I missed the wrestle ups. Yeah, what a shame. But yeah, I like I like watching, especially watching as well. When you just watch how he moves, that's a uh, that's nice how to like learn off him passing. Treat. He moves yeah. well. He moves well. Fair Fucking play. Happy when he he's is, yeah. Here. When he's north south, it's very like he's dug, he's slow dug death. Yeah. yeah. He's very good at north south. Mm. Cool. Top three favourite submissions. So for me, it's that mount bullshit I'm doing at the moment. Probably a heel hook and a rear naked choke. You? I like uh smother choke. Finger in the eyes. No, that's not a submission. That's an attack. True. Uh um, an assault. I like a heel hook. Like a, uh, if you like a smother choke, yeah, like a say, yeah. Smoke. yeah. We have a question on that. How'd you do it? How do I do it? Yeah, we'll yeah. come back to that. Let me let me fucking right. finish. Fucking hell, just like a segue. I like a heel hook. Yeah, inside yeah. And outside. Yep. Yeah. Favorites. Any. Uh, and that's all I get really. Oh, straight ankle, lock, straight ankle, straight ankle, straight ankle, straight ankle, straight. Yeah, I got a straight. You don't get many face chokes from the back. Nah, my back work isn't great, you know. 
Yeah, yes. some Defense yeah. is getting better. Yeah, enjoyable. Well, yeah, savage today though. Yeah, not, good not, fun today. Not showable today. <laughs> <laughs> we had a great time. For, on normal people, it's good. Yeah, yeah. All right. Anyway, what about yeah? Mother's well, milk. There's a question on the mother's milk. Mother's milk. Yeah. Someone said, "How do you finish the mother's milk?" And you gotta, you gotta mention get fucking both hands above the head. Is that what you do? Yeah. I, yeah. I've actually, yeah. I actually sometimes. Nah, I've heard it. Think on, you I've, want both hands above the head. You just want one. Really? Yeah. You just want one hand above the head. And you can either do it the big damn way where he just pulls his chest into your nose and your nose is going to break. Or you can actually try to smother them with your wet rash guard. Uh, just with, them. with the one hand. Yeah. It's always with the one hand. I've done it with two hands. I've done it with one hand. Fair play. Two, two hands was easier. Fair play. But one hand. There you have it. You've just got to position it. Yeah, you've got to keep chasing their mouth with the, and their nose. But yeah, basically you're just pushing your chest into their nose really hard and they'll have a turn to the side and give you... Uh, more options double underhooks yeah more options basically or yeah that's it great love a mother's milk but yeah I've recently been doing a different move and someone asked me a question what's this move called and how is it set up well Tarek named it aptly the Boston tea bag and I think it works pretty well as that Boston tea bag Boston tea bag yeah it's a whole Boston series that was the the, the uh, for those listening what you put the original videos the question box as yeah and there's multiple photos of you doing that there's a video on my insta of me doing that and yeah it's been working well i really enjoy it and also it's pretty fucking tiring if you to walk someone's arm up using your legs and a sort of dip motion on their shoulders rather than trying to use your arms every time with your like feet directly on the hips but obviously it's probably easier for you to get bridged off so you know save it for people that are tired i guess mm. all right uh, S-mount Does it matter which leg I put forward Does it depend on their arms So many questions <laughs> uh, S-mount I don't think it matters I think you can go either way You just can make sure you're stable You make yeah. sure like that You're pulling the fucking head in right Yeah and that their arms aren't framing on their forehead People like to do the self frame on their forehead You've got to get the arms out of the way And make sure that their biceps are like by their ears Not like by their temple use your chin to get rid of the arms yeah yeah push with the and then you've got to lift their head really hard so you can actually actively get your knee under their head and to stop them turning with you and yeah I think you can go either way I like to go to my left side because I'm more flexible that way flexible yeah more flexible on my left mm. so yeah maybe watch a Danaher DVD to find out the true answer he has a preference he's nah, I don't know just assume he's got the detail assume he's got the details Cool, all right. You're preparing a white belt for no gi IBJJF comp. He is only pulling guard. What would be your game plan? Poke Thanks. in the eyes. Hey? Poke in the eyes. Poke in the eyes. Flying guard pull. <laughs> Just keep pulling guard until there's an injury. <laughs> keep, <laughs> keep jumping guard. Yeah, man. keep jumping close guard. Until and, then, there's an injury. and then learn like a technical get up and jump again. <laughs> That's what you did? Maybe not. I might. I might get... I think just a good like card <laughs> till there's an injury. <laughs> then you win, don't you? you? Just keep doing that. Uh, uh, in the gi as well, collar and sleeve guard. That's probably the best. That white belt. Yeah, good collar and sleeve guard with sweep the foot him, on the sweep hip. Sweep him somehow. And get back on top. So you got to do. What kind of sweep we talking? Or look to just get closed guard because most of the time you can just like e eke out a decision win just because. It's hard for people to escape close guard in like five minute rounds if you're really stalling and you have the gi. Mm. So yeah, that would be my advice. Get to close guard, threaten a couple sweeps and then just like, or if you manage to get a sweep, make sure that you kind of get them to wrestle up with you and then you pull guard again. That's two. <laughs> <laughs> Is how you're going to become a world champion in IBJF. Next question. I'm liking these. Uh, Moving quick, post haste. We this. are. We're fucking. We're smashing. This is actually like rapid fire. How do you recover a shotgun grip? Fuck. This is a proper question. From opponent, from cross Ashy when opponent turns out. Pull the knee line back. Yeah, but I think he's saying that. He's you, losing. If you don't even have the shotgun grip and they've started to turn out, at that stage, it's safer to disengage. 
you can try to chase the back but if you're basically if your reaping leg comes out then you don't really have any follow-ups if they turn out and you lose the shotgun grip i would tend to invert and try and go 50 50 and yeah if you already have the shotgun grip and they spin you should be able to keep the shotgun grip and then transition the other way to get the backside 50 50. Mm. we did that today not today but we've done that on technique tip of the week in general maybe not on technique tip of the week oh, we're, that's we're jason Rowan. That. yeah we've personally done that yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah back in the day so yeah we need to get back to those that'd be sick we should do more technique tips as well we need to, yeah. maybe we need to do two or three a in week. one go not a week just in one go one a week treating me and keeping keen we need to plan them out yeah. Send in, guys, send in uh, on, right the on the YouTube, YouTube comments, comments what techniques. Actually, this is good because we, we just think of them. What, whatever techniques you want to see, put them in the YouTube comments. Or s don't actually don't send us DMs because they just get lost. But send YouTube comment uh, what technique tips you want to see. Yeah. Or in the, in the technique tip videos that we put out, comment what technique tip you want to see so that we can see them. Yeah. So if uh, you're on Instagram, comment on the technique tip video what you want to see next and YouTube same same not ones we've done before as well well we can just filter them out we can just maybe yeah. no yeah but yeah alright then alright then we'll, we'll do the filtering shall we fuck you know alright yeah. the best way to create distance in 50-50 to finish the heel hook to me you, uh, fucking hell uh, so you, like, throw you your second leg before. over get to 90-10 then you've got one foot on their stomach to kick their belly away so they can't really grab your hands properly and then you've got your other leg over the top so you can like swipe their hands away and if they're grabbing your wrist or something you can free your second hand uh yeah sometimes it's a question of like denying them any good grips if you can like shell up really well sometimes it's pretty hard for them to grab your elbow or your head mm. yeah that's it basically and you got when you get the grip you got to pull yourself away so they can't access you with the second leg yeah, it's fucking hard. Most of the time in 50-50, people hand fight out. And even if you get a good heel bite, they can hand fight out pretty easily eventually. 50-50 is a tough position, man. Yeah, it's hard to, yeah, hard 50 -50 to really get the really. finish directly from there because people are too too good at just normal escapes. Normally, you've got to be spinning left and right to confuse someone for a split second and catch them out. Or else it's just going to be a long haul. You know, yeah. I'm trying to get the heel. Then they risk a little bit to get your heel. And then they go back to defending their leg. And then you just do that for ages until... The round ends, I guess. Could be. Could be I that you just Jeff. get finished really fast. Sharp. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be Jeff. Also ADCC. ADCC. I fucking love heel hooks. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Techniques for a mat enforcer to stop the spazzes. Mat enforcer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, dark room them. Just bully them. Yeah. You just want to mount them and bu uh, just fucking s yeah. sit, sit them in the dark room. Get to but mount. Not, but not enough so they're going to tap. Just keep, no. keep them... Keep, just keep them in bottom out. Right, if you don't can let them turn. Make them tap with some embarrassing shit. That would be perfect. Yeah. If you don't have someone that's strong enough to do that, then you can just get someone to leg lock them over and over again. Repeatedly. So yeah. there's the mental training, which would be just leg locking them over again and making them tap loads. But some people don't count that as a submission in their head somehow. And yeah. then the secondly, <laughs> if you can just like, ideally would just be get on top, get to mount and then just like, really embarrassing submission and then just repeat and do it over and over again and give them no play as well much better to no play yeah sub them fewer times but give them absolutely no play than it is to sub just them a lot make them suffer yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. you don't want to give like make them think that oh, they, they could get you in comp it needs to be just zero play and absolute domination and, and that's it yeah and if they're going like comp retard rounds then you just match them you have to yeah, yeah. match them yeah, yeah you gotta match them yeah or oh, just don't yeah <laughs> just <laughs> you can't accept that really i mean if they're if they're actually any good they wouldn't be a spaz so no you wouldn't need to enforce you'd be humbled by them you, but you just need to crush them yeah match yeah. match their face crushing would be the ideal basically mounting any ma any submissions from mount especially yeah. the bullshit submissions also if someone's like really spazzy you can get them to go over a couple of people prior to you so they don't have that like initial burst of strength and they realize and they get a little bit tired and then you can go and spar with them yeah yeah then fuck them up yeah then then enforce once you know that they're spazzing rather than just assuming from how someone looks yeah and getting the full blunt of spaz yeah exactly yeah you don't want to get the full brunt the fresh spaz is the worst the worst they can do push-ups first yeah you could also like if someone's really spazzy like 
try not to pass too early if that makes sense like don't don't try and let's say you could use 50 percent of your energy and pass in a minute or you could use 10 percent of your energy and waste 50 percent of theirs and pass in three minutes you're better off just doing that and wasting their energy more and then when you get to mount the torture will be easier and you won't get bucked off mount or you're less likely to get kicked off mount true so yeah all a mental game sick sick grip breaks when they bury their hands in choy bar i'd just like to say bury was spelt wrong here <laughs> spelt with two r's bury like strawberries <laughs> <laughs> that would have been correct just the wrong word but this is b-u-r-r-y <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you bury. will. Bury. bury. Answer the Grip fucking breaks question. when they bury their hands in Choi Bar. Uh, I would go for Tarika Plata or, or to try and get your partners back or a triangle. I wouldn't even try and separate their hands, really. It's folly. If someone's got Waste, good grips. Wasting energy. Yeah, you're better off just looking for a triangle or a back take. If someone's hands are connected, it means they can't block you with their hands from running around. So yeah. Start yeah. the next sequence. Yeah, so you can just go straight to their back. Next sequence also begins. Also in the instructionals. Oh, That's wow. That's crazy. I should buy that, man. You should, we, we, we should <laughs> buy that. Fuck, I didn't think of that. This is actually good advertising. Yeah. Never thought of that. Uh, yeah, oh. man. Next question. Tips on how to engage mentally during sparring. Struggling to focus on techniques <laughs> during rounds. This is Christian Osbeck. No joke. This is Christian. Like, uh, Christian Osbeck. It does start with a CR. <laughs> similar to I know it's not him Cristiano asking a question. But <laughs> 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 Chris, Christian Osbeck will freak out. So he be he's the joke that we made earlier. He's like, oh, I'm just, I don't have mentally. I'm just, I'm checked <laughs> out, checked out. <laughs> What's the actual question again? Tips on how to engage <laughs> mentally during sparring. Hey, you're you're sparring. You struggling to focus on techniques during rounds. Oh, I get it. Yeah, yeah. I do the same. I'm just yeah. I'm, that's what I asked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's why you asked. Just think about like getting, making yourself as tired as possible and just <laughs> getting getting a good pump in every time you do jujitsu. Who's that? <laughs> and that's <laughs> how you'll maintain like a strong waistline and like <laughs> you'll, you'll look good when you go to the beach and that sort of stuff. That's it. That's it. That's how. That's how you get better. And hey. Then, to defend myself but <laughs> you should message this guy you might be friends with non-elite competitors I actually think about techniques yeah when I'm sparring with you I'm just trying to go as hard as possible <laughs> the entire time well my eyes are often open so that's the time when <laughs> it's best to strike best to strike good question though I mean yeah. depends how experienced you are that's you actually learn, a good answer like, yeah. yeah it depends how experienced you are but also you gotta do what I don't do, which I've been meaning to do for a while, you have to watch some instructionals. Owen has a good one. Or you should like watch something and go to training purposefully to, with a plan. Yeah. So like, let's say you're, you're watching an instruction and you're like, okay, I just want to hit this move and that's what I want to fucking hit. I'm going to just try and hit that as much as possible on people. Yeah. And also don't, maybe you shouldn't spar with people you know you're just going to fucking go spaz with. Like yeah. you, you, you're gonna have to like throughout the week. I usually, I'll spar with some lighter people, some people who are like are this technical, and I'll, that's why I'm like trying to practice moves and work on things. And then when mm. I come to train with you, it, I just go full retard as hard as I can. But I know that I'm not gonna get get any technique going whatsoever. That's the spirit. I need a heel heel hook you today. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember. Uh, that's probably not how you should do it though. No. I mean, you are, I guess, helping me with my training more than you're helping you with yours. Yeah. What should my approach be when I'm sparring you then? Yeah, just try and spar normally. Mm. More technically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. More well, technical. try and win, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I am trying to win. <laughs> yeah, but you, I guess try, like, honestly try as yeah. if you had only one go. Rather, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rather than EMOM. <laughs> <laughs> every Next minute time. on the minute yeah yeah that's true is that what it stands for every minute on the minute okay yeah. so let's give this guy his proper answer then so like yeah. with, even with harder training partners still stick to your plan yeah that's the whole thing is that you have to not be flustered when you're tired you have to still just do the techniques even though you're tired even though you might have to do them a little bit later but it's mostly just thinking about the correct move and then it'll be less tiring rather than like you should spend all your energy thinking about the moves and then they should be very easy to perform like you said on the last video like when you're tired on the move that would normally take you like one go to hit you have to start thinking about deeper into the sequencing of how you're going to set that up yeah exactly yeah well i mean if you're super tired then you, you have to rest for a little bit so that's like you've got to find little breaks to rest 
when you're super tired and then you got enough energy that okay i can do one more attack or whatever now and i feel like i can do a pretty long scramble if i need to to get to somewhere where i can hold again and then do another scramble and try and finish mm. yeah so you can't can't be too fucked and then try and go for an attack just because like otherwise it's stalling but basically you need to rest enough that you can do an attack yeah have energy to do the attack and mm. and, that, and then assume that there's just gonna have to be like some kind of sequence in there too yeah and yeah try to if you're struggling to focus on techniques you need to just pick someone who's easier and smaller than you and then you'll have more time to think that's true yeah you and need if, more strength than them too if you don't know any techniques you have to you have to learn some techniques fair play that's a good question sick sick, sick. this guy's your best friend his name's craig all right single leg x <laughs> dealing with an opponent that boots hard and you and you can't get the achilles nor reap Mm. I feel like if someone does that, you should be able to get a heel hook really easily. Uh, otherwise, you can pass their leg across your body and lock in saddle. And if they're still booting really hard, it'd be very easy to either get the heel hook inside heel hook or should be, but collect the second leg. That elbow down, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, pull the knee, shotgun grip. Yeah, I mean, if they're, it makes it hard if they're booting really hard. But also, you can't like just flex your foot against a straight foot lock like that. Is, no. They say like put the boot on, but but that doesn't work basically like put the boot on <laughs> if just if someone does nah, that you, and you, you have want, a straight you're, you're foot lock you the exact opposite man yeah well, but a straight foot lock yeah let's say a straight foot lock he's saying a straight foot lock but if someone does that you can just you can just shrimp out and, and push their toes straight and then that'd be it watch mm. a Shashinsky's shotgun ankle lock instructional and you'll have more success with your straight foot locks there you go sick how do you do mother's milk sub we kind of went over that you pull their nose into your chest until they tap or you cover their mouth until they tap. Details though, one arm. So like obviously having having the one arm, you need to get the make sure you right. get, get the good lat grip or the, the cross the neck grip. Make sure that's yeah. perfect so they don't move it yeah. again. De yeah, details. I like to go with the super deep underhook holding their neck and the second hand under so my elbows are close together. You could even grab your elbows, I guess, and then just like roll your chest forward into their face and that would get you a nice uh, no bridge of the nose tap. But I think people turning their head left and right it's kind of key that you have like both grips really long so they can't look either side mm. yeah trap them yeah without like a big bridge turning to one side they can't just like turn their head a little bit without bridging mm. cool where's the sprawl passing video lads i told you we should have done that today Fuck. we can do it wednesday yeah. tomorrow if your back is okay <laughs> it's three times a week just joking. i want to do four times a week to be fair that would be crazy get it there yeah, we're doing Wednesday. And the next question is how to deal with that sprawl passing super only. Maybe you should ask this guy's training partner how to do the sprawl passing. Hey. I'm not going to say the names. These oh, are supposed to be anonymous. Right, right, right. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's if true, only they true, could true, link true, up true, true. these two people, but they'll never know. <laughs> how to right. defend... Give me, what was the question? <laughs> how to defend the sprawl passing. I, I can oh, actually I answer that, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah why not? Sorry, yeah, yeah. I, I, wasn't, I forgot that we were answering them. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's say let's say they're sprawling. The <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's say they're sprawling. Oh, one you got to make sure that your knee is in line so that you're not using your hip flexor too much. Or like once it's in line, it should be pretty much okay. If they're just like static, and then if they're moving left and right, then you're gonna have to start using your hip flexors, which is tiring. So fucking tiring on the hip. I'll, if someone is sprawl passing, I'll make enough space that I can collar tie, and then I'll start to technical stand up. So, because they're like leaning on you, kind of move out of the way, and then you start to technical stand up while pulling their head down. Then you'll kind of get them to put their hands on you, and then you can start to use like drag grips. I like love that You've far that side drag grip. And then I like to sit up from there. And then if wrestle they start up. to curl up, then I might go fake wrestle up, or I might go for the wrestle up. Or if they step their legs up, then I might grab the legs. Or if they do anything silly with their arms, then I'll go for the arms. You literally did it all of them today. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Come yeah. to Rogers and train in the morning. Interesting with the um, fuck. What was I going to say? Sport pass. You're saying the wrestle up. What other option did you say? Uh, not necessarily a wrestle up though. You have to make space first. You can try and yeah. get. You can try and scoop the legs as well. That like that is route one. Is just like scooping the leg and pulling it over the top of you. Collar tie. Yeah, collar tie. That's fucking good. Yeah, it's like collar tie yeah. people. It's fucking annoying because you have to. You have to address it. Yeah, and by you addressing, you take pressure off the sprawl pass. Yeah, if you don't address it and you just like let your chin go to your chest, like it's not actually tiring. If someone, if you're on your knees and someone's below you holding your head, mm -hmm. but then when they stand up, then they can it's instantly snap you down. Yes, yeah, so you have to deal with it before they stand up, so you have limited time. 
to work. How do you deal with the cross? The that straight away. The collar tie. Yeah. yeah, you clear it straight away, or you just have to engage. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like if if you get bumped off and you're not, you're kind of like still up here in a sort of waiting posture, then they can collar that, tie and start to stand up. Don't if you just jump, if you just double, they're gonna sprawl. But if you collar tie first and you make them like rip up or push away, then you can double or don't, you can attack the arms. Don't accept the collar tie at all costs. Mm, yeah, like you have to. Has you have dressed. to respect the collar tie, or else you're gonna get snapped or ankle picked mm, or yeah. double legged or just ragged to the floor. Sport pa- we're talking about sport passing and not stand up. Yeah, but like as they stand up. Oh, okay. As they stand up. As they collar tie and stand yeah, up, you're gonna get something's gonna happen. Scissor sweep. Bad. Yeah. Scissor jumping sweep. Scissor sweep. <laughs> jumping close guard. As we know, there's no there's no defense to that. True that. Continue. We should do that. Jumping we should scissors. do rounds where we just jump scissors. Like you're only allowed to jump scissors. <laughs> And there's, no, there's no defense and disengage <laughs> <laughs> it's a good move uh cool stick to the most effective techniques when training or trying rando cool subs well depends how good you are right yes Christian I guess, Osbeck, Shah. yeah true that he can do whatever he wants so for me i don't know you've got it depends what your goals are if you're just having fun then whatever you want then just rando <laughs> cool subs yeah. and if you are training for war or competition then war. I guess, <laughs> today on. we go to war <laughs> yeah we have those posts yeah if you have to uh, today's about war violence yeah, going to the garden being a warrior uh yeah, yeah you gotta fucking win competitions right and bullshit the bullshit stuff doesn't really work in competition though yeah but sometimes it does so sometimes you can discover stuff doing the bullshit stuff like you can discover effective reactions yeah effective movements because you know let's say you started and you just started jiu-jitsu and you're just sat there in front of someone in mount you'd push something and just nothing would work like everywhere you pushed you'd just be like literally nothing i do is gonna turn him at all yeah but then as you get more where you get better you start to be able to move them more with like less effort so yeah if you do more random bullshit subs it still takes a lot more control to be able to do them like obviously I could just head and arm a white belt like 50 times in a round, but it wouldn't be as technical as getting the Boston tea bag. Yeah, because you... you mm. Yeah, because it's, it's harder, basically. And Yeah. Well. You're going to refine other techniques, <laughs> potentially. Yeah. You're yeah, going yeah. to have to refine your mounts a bit more. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And it's just practicing mount, and you put more risk. You give, put yourself in more risk of losing it so that worse people, if you have to train with them, will be able to like buck you off and stuff much easier. Mm. So, yeah. There it is. And then, you know... You also just like get more goes at the back, for example, if you're working on the mount quite a lot, people will eventually just total and run away. I would never I, I would never do that. Nah, that would be cowardly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> dealing with the octopus guard when using the overback grip, get cross face. Get cross face. If uh if you can't tip them back down onto their elbow, you need to keep your knees on the inside of their hips. So you can't let your partner's knees go around your hips. You know what I'm saying? You've got to have your knees as a frame on your partner's hip. Yeah. <laughs> or else they're going to sneak out and get your back or just do some some random wrestle up where you have to just like give up top position. Mm. So just make sure when you get the overback grip, you're leaning on them so that when they come up to their elbow, they do it slow enough that you can find their, their moustache with your knuckle and cross face them. Love, love, cross that. Face. love a crossface. Love a crossface. That's our motto. Was that it? That was all the questions. Fuck you know. What's the time? How how quickly do you have to go? We well, may, we may have one on YouTube. Oh yeah, should I check the, the tube? Oh, got, yeah, yeah go on then. Let's go on the Charles Ogan experience. What a technique tip. No, no, no. Here you go, mate. In the yeah. meantime. How do you deal with being tapped? I'll just talk about my day. I went to a uh, Italian restaurant that I hadn't been to in a while. Not an Italian restaurant, sorry, an Italian cafe. Hadn't been there in three or four months and uh, I kept putting it off because I'm pretty sure they'd seen me walking around Hammersmith, but it had been too long, so I just kept avoiding them. And today I summed up the courage to go back in there despite the awkwardness. And boy, was it awkward. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, I ordered a lot of food almost as a sorry, and they gave me a free pain au chocolat 
and a free activated charcoal croissant. Something about straight ankle locks here, working leg entanglements, keeping escapes. That wasn't really a question. Any chance you could do a technique tip of the... Here's a good one. A technique tip of the week on how to avoid counter a... Or counter a bottom player using cross hip to post... to Cross hip post to slip the cross fade from half guard to bottom out. Yeah. Yeah. It's Can like, you read? Not well. <laughs> it's like swimming. You never forget to learn how to ride a bicycle. That was that was a good quote from you. Thanks, man. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even check these comments. Uh, how do you keep an opponent from falling back on leg locks when you're playing a sloppy half butter with the oh, leg? That's the issue. Top, with the top leg tucked behind the armpit as per Owen's instructional. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Should we answer that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so let's say the foot's up in the armpit. So first of all, you have to read your opponent and ideally, if you know that they're just jumping on legs all the time, you can save yourself the slight risk that you get heel hooked. But let's say your knee is really close to your chest. As they, your right knee should also be out. So whatever they do with this leg, your right leg should be the main thing defending. If they manage to sit both their knees past your right knee to yep. attack your left leg, in trouble. then that's when it's an issue and you need to pummel your right leg in. But otherwise, if your right leg is between their legs and they just sit, you can just pinch your knees together and they'll never clear both your knees because they're together. But let's say they do get over this knee, then I'll go with my right butterfly hook, like Dele Heva hook, and just kick them in the balls and that's how you get your knee free from the straight foot lock or which i would recommend especially if there's points if someone sits on your legs from top you should come up and then you're going to have more chance to slip the heel and then if they continue turning to attack your heel let's say they're attacking my leg here my left leg for those that aren't watching they're attacking your left leg you're on your right hip playing half butterfly they drop onto their right hip to attack your left leg I'm going to stand up on my left leg. And if they continue turning to their right hip to get my left leg, then their left leg will be open and you can pull it out from between your legs and attack your own heel hook. Or you can try and pass. Fucking hell. That was great. That's the great move. description. Sick That's man. the move. Do you, were you imagining it? Trying to. It's like you're really there. <laughs> <laughs> we should do little demos here. Go on, get my leg. It's, do you remember the Mauricio episode? That was fucking sick. We should get... We should, fuck that's crazy so yeah he's sitting on this side i'm gonna stand up into him not now obviously because i'm tired but then and then i'll attack this leg the more he turns to his side let me use actual word like left and right the more he turns to his right like turn your chest down that's the one the, the more this leg will be light and exposed and i can rip it out and then rip his leg to shreds and that's my advice to you guys uh i wonder if he's gonna watch this part of the podcast this far too this far in that's fucking years you gotta go yeah I have to go I have to go to training guys I've gotta go I I don't have my gum shield in (laughs) I've gotta go hold on bye guys yep good to see you Uh, guys like and subscribe if you've made it this far short podcast we have nothing to say but we'll be back next week are you here next week this is a firm handshake fuck this is sick man are you here next week yeah Yeah, I thought you were away no you're back now I'm back now I'm going to beachfront BJJ Yep. On the 8th and 9th. For how long? 8th, 8th and 9th. And then I'm going to... <laughs> Go on, fuck it. And then I'm going to Secret Strangle Club <laughs> on the 14th. This is like a Thai massage. <laughs> and, and then on the 21st and 2nd and 3rd, more like, the, yeah, those three days, anyway, you'll be, I'll be in Stadam. You'll be around. Amsterdam. Amsterdam. When's uh, the footlock camp with you, Shizinski, and the other fellas? August. What day? You don't know. Eighth. Wrong. Sorry. Later than that. Sixteenth. Twelfth. Okay. Eighteenth. Anyway, see you there. It's in Poland. It's Guys, in Poland. Like and subscribe if you like this podcast. Make sure you do all that. Check out our uh, instructionals. Check stay out hard programs. We should say that as the end. Carry of the boat. Stay, stay hard. Stay hard. <laughs> we should make we made that up we should do it <laughs> stay hard guys we should, we should end this podcast see you later bye, bye guys